Thank you very much, Nick. And uh, thanks for the very nice presentation we just heard from you, Professor Park. Uh, data are the new gold. Uh, that is more or less where we are. Without data, more or less we can go nowhere in nowadays world. What I want to talk today about is facilitation of global digital route cluster. We heard about that yesterday. We heard about that today, and uh, we will see a MOU signature at the end of the day today. But uh, how do we actually do that? What do we need to do to build that cluster? And more so, why should we actually do that? You may have heard about uh, shipping 4.0, uh, which is coming up as uh, the new way of how we are executing shipping, how we are improving shipping. And uh, um, that is right where uh, you just talked about, Professor Park, uh, combining maritime logistics with uh, ICT technology. And we are getting to a smart maritime logistics, which is the reason why we have shipping. Um, and uh, that picture from uh, uh, Sun Bei Hong um, from 2019 illustrates in which direction we want to go. And it also shows where we already are. When you have seen what uh, we just heard in the prior presentation from Professor Park, uh, LTE uh, Maritime has been implemented, data is being shared. We have uh, uh, for data sharing uh, a lot of uh, uh, low orbit uh, satellites. Uh, we go to VDES and other means. And we actually are not moving towards shipping 4.0, we are in shipping 4.0. And all of that is based on data. Without data, it is nothing. So again, to my initial uh, saying data is the new gold. But shipping 4.0 has a lot of challenges. We are in a very traditional world in maritime. And uh, coming from the aviation world, uh, working for decades in aviation and then starting 2004 in maritime, um, I have to say I was a little bit shocked where we had been 2004 in maritime. Uh, large ships sailing with paper charts, uh, captains plotting um, uh, routes on paper charts with pens and other things. Um, that was something which I have not thought to see when moving from aviation to marine. But just take a look where we have moved from 2004 to 2022. Uh, we have gone a long way. We have recognized, Maritime has recognized that we need to address our challenges. And even so, shipping is a very economic friendly uh, way of transporting mass goods, comparing per tonnage with other uh, modes of transportation. We are still trying to struggle with reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, you have heard yesterday the different uh, ways IMO is trying to promote that and that we actually are forced, rightfully so, to go there. So that's one of the challenges we have with shipping 4.0. Another challenge we are faced with is that, um, as we also have seen before, collaboration is important. Collaboration, innovative uh, innovation. But for collaboration, you need to share data. And sharing data is not in the uh, uh, genes of maritime actors. They try to hide. They try to keep the data for themselves and do not try to share. Well, data is gold, so you do not want to give out your gold right away. But without sharing, we cannot move forward. So we need to share. That's an important aspect to keep in mind. We need to share data, as I was, was saying. Otherwise, we will not improve. And when you take a look to those pictures, I had one picture from a, um, from a bridge of a cruise ship, most modern cruise ship in uh, the late 50s, early 60s. Uh, 
there was more or less nothing what was shared on the outside. Everything was on the ship. Well, even the communication with the engine room was via a tube, uh, not digital. Now, when you take a look to the pictures down uh, with modern ships, with the modern uh, vessel traffic services and vessel support centers, um, it's all full of electronics. That only works when you're sharing data. So you need to share your information. You need to keep that in mind. One thing what we always need to understand when we are trying to move forward is that shipping is international by nature. We are transporting goods around the globe. We are moving from continent to continent. And shipping is the bloodstream of modern economics. We see the effects when something doesn't go right. Just remember the blockage of the, uh, the, the Suez Canal and what effect it has had to economics in uh, Asia and in Europe. The uh, um, large number of ships uh, in front of US ports, the shortage of containers, which had ripple effects to all of the economics. Uh, my wife drives a shoe store, um, and I would, would have never imagined that I feel in the store of my wife in a small town outside of Frankfurt that there are issues with shipping. But the shoes from, uh, from Asia didn't come. She couldn't sell it. So it comes to the, our, our own life if shipping doesn't work as it should. And that again makes uh, us uh, understand how important shipping for international trade and our economics is. But we also have in shipping the regional conundrum. So we have the difficulty that yes, shipping is international, but a lot of actors are focused and need to focus on regional and on local activities. Ports are not necessarily interested in how ships are cruising through the oceans as long as they arrive in time. And they do not want them to, share, to, to come ahead of time. As you see, for example, in Singapore, the, the, a lot of ships waiting to get a birth place. And also when IMO started e-navigation, e-navigation was seen as an international initiative of the international maritime organizations. But what you see on these charts are those clusters of uh, ports with e-navigation initiatives, which are regional. So we have EU initiatives on e-navigation. We have Asian initiatives on e-navigation, Korea initiative of e-navigation. We have in Canada, in the US, uh, in the Mediterranean, in Australia, we have initiatives on e-navigation. But if you think back, there is not a single e-navigation initiative which is global, which actually crosses the ocean. Now, remember the, for the prior slide, shipping is international and need to be international, but solutions being developed are regional or local. And we need to break this conundrum. It is a dilemma we are in that some actors like shipping lines think global and not necessarily local or regional because they are responsible for transporting goods for example, from Asia to Europe, and other actors in shipping think local, but not global, because they are responsible of the activities in a given port or in a given region. In order to break that, we need international collaboration. We not only need collaboration within local communities, like, for example, in a port community system, trying to bring together the different actors, 
And when we had been as the STM validation project looking into implementing port collaborative decision making, it was astonishing that we had ports where we at the first time brought together all actors that the tugboat operators haven't talked to the pilots or to the stevedores. So we brought them together and not only on the regional and local side, but internationally we need to collaborate. It is paramount because we cannot optimize what we do if the international trade of ships, in that example uh, from San Bei Hong, trading from uh, uh, Korea to Europe, is not look at international collaboration. So what we really try to do with the cluster, which are to, is to be established, is to bring on the stakeholders in different countries and regions to foster and enable international collaboration, which helps us to support the international structure of shipping by acting regional and local, but collaborating internationally. And there are defined stakeholders which we need to have in. We have project supporting organizations, IALA, IMO, IHO, international organizations, which are stakeholders as they are defining standards, as they are defining guidelines, as they are defining um, the, the necessary infrastructure, regulations, we need. we need the local actors in ports, ports, terminals, tugboats, pilots, and so on and so forth. We need the shipping lines which are connecting the different ports together. We need the data service provider like the, uh, the HOs, the, the ranks, the value-added resellers, and also those which are providing real-time data streams. The coastal administrations, the service providers, and the research institutes which help us with the science which we just heard in the prior uh, presentation as a basis which we can build on. But we also need countries and regions. Republic of Korea is an, uh, a forerunner in that direction. Singapore is very active. But we also need East African countries. Egypt, for example, with the Suez Canal the North African countries, the European countries. All of those need to be brought together in the cluster and they need to be engaged in the cluster for it to be successful. Don't want to read in light of time uh, those statements, but these are the highlights of the last Digital at Sea Asia Pacific conference um, here in, uh, in uh, Korea. And we were defining that we need to build a cluster of international interregional test beds. But we need to move also from test beds to implementation, because test beds alone are not helpful. They are showing us the way, but we need implementations. We need to increase the collaboration of the stakeholders, and we need to make suggestions for, to IMO to actually define the necessary regulatory infrastructure. But how do we get to facilitate that cluster? Some ideas I brought together um, and bring to your attention is getting key st stakeholders together. I talked about it before. Signing an MOU, which will be done today, so now is the day, it's not yesterday, it's not tomorrow, it's now. Establishing a secretariat which can lead and guide and ensure moving forward in that cluster. Developing visions and long-term plans. In which direction do we want to go? What do we want to ac accomplish? And try to harmonize that through all stakeholders. Defining projects in the context of the cluster regional and national projects in the context of the cluster, and then executing those cluster projects 
and use that framework for harmonizing and coordinating. Then consolidating the results and establish the required regulations and standards. If we move forward with that, I think we can very well facilitate digital at sea cluster and bring it to the result, which is an implementation and improves efficiency and safety of maritime transportation. So the concept of the cluster is to do global harmonization and local implementation. Thank you very much.